Hey, hi, what's going on, guys? Welcome to part third on creating mobile web applications using jQuery Mobile. Now, guys, in this particular video, we're going to create our very first class. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a subfolder inside our actual directory that's a jQuery Mobile, and I'm going to name it to Core. Okay, guys, and inside it, we're going to keep all of our classes. So the very first one going to be a database class. So this particular class will take care of all the connections uh, that we want to create with the database. So I'm going to open it with my text editor. And here I'm going to start the PHP block. So guys, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say class called manage database. Okay. Now guys, inside it, I'm going to create, you know, a couple of variables. So the very first one is going to be the protected dollar DB cone, like the DB connection, I can say. Uh, the other one going to be protected dollar DB host. Okay, for that, I'm going to say to localhost, like this. Uh, the next thing going to be a protected. Uh, dollar db name that gonna be let's say jQuery mobile like we haven't created this particular database but still we can key it in and later we will create a database with the same name uh, the next thing I'm gonna say would be protected dollar db uh, they're gonna be user for that it's gonna be root and the very last thing gonna be protected dollar db uh, they're gonna be password so for my local server, I don't have any password. Now uh, guys, next thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function called connect inside it. Okay. And here, uh, guys, I'm going to run a try and a catch statement. So here going to be try and here going to be catch. So inside try, I'm going to say dollar this db con. Now guys, again, if you're not sure what this particular uh, this thing is, then let me tell you. Guys, all the variables which are created inside a class, not inside a function. So these five variables are not inside this particular function, but they are inside this particular class. Uh, we can like we can only call them by using dollar this. So let's say uh, if I have the same variable called dollar db con out here like this, db con. So I would have used it in this way like dollar db con. But now I don't have this particular variable inside this function. It's outside this function. I have to say dollar this and then the variable name. Okay, so I believe it makes some sense. Uh, guys, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a PDO connection, guys. PDO connection is a more secure way to build a connection with a database instead of using that traditional MySQL connect and MySQL select DB thing. So here I'm gonna say MySQL host okay for that I'm gonna say dollar this DB house again guys it's not inside the function it's inside the parent class that's the reason we need to say dollar this okay uh, next thing I'm gonna say DB name okay that gonna be uh, dollar this and for that I'm gonna copy this particular variable name called dollar DB name then here I'm gonna say dollar this DB user and the very last thing gonna be dollar this db pass so like this db password okay so that's all and like if you're able to run this particular try statement we're gonna return dollar this db con okay dollar this db con and guys if you're not able to do anything with the connection like if you're getting any kind of errors so we're gonna run a cat statement and what they're gonna be pdo exception dollar e and here i'm going to say return dollar e get message so it's going to you know let us know what the actual problem we have with our connection so here we're going to be get message all right guys and now we are done with our actual uh, database class now next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create one more class uh, for this one i'm going to say class dot manage users dot php okay <coughs> and inside it, uh, I'm going to say class manage users. And guys, here, uh, very first, I'm going to create a function called construct. Now, guys, what a construct function is, uh, guys, construct function is something that will run automatically uh, every time we're going to initiate this particular class. 
so let me give you an example out here so what I'm gonna do is uh, here I'm gonna say echo hello world okay uh, guys here I'm gonna say dollar init will be equals to manage users okay or probably I can leave it like this so what I'm gonna do is uh, out here I'm gonna say core I'm gonna go to the class call manage users and guys you will notice a phrase has been written out here which says hello world and you will notice we have actually wrote hello world out here now let's do one thing I remove the name called construct and say hello here and if I will refresh you will notice every like the particular phrase called hello world is not there guys the reason is that we have only initiated the class we have never called this particular function so uh, what I have to do is I have to say dollar in it hello like this and now if I'll refresh it will say hello world so guys for all other functions we will have to call them but if it's a construct function we will not have to call it it will run automatically whenever we will initiate this particular class so I'm gonna rename it to construct okay like this now guys as we are you know like as every time this function will run automatically we gonna you know make a connection with the database like in this particular class we have only created the function to make a connection but we have like we never run this function so that would be gonna do in this particular class so uh, what I'm gonna do is here on the top I'm gonna say include once called class dot database dot PHP okay here I'm gonna create a variable called protected dollar link okay you can name it to anything you want like this and here I'm gonna say uh, db con will be equals to new instance of the class called manage database like this here I'm gonna say dollar this link now guys again uh, link is a variable which is inside the class not inside the function so that's the reason we need to say dollar this link so here I'm gonna say dollar this link and there. I'm gonna call this particular function called connect so uh, let me copy the name called connect here like this so I'm gonna say dollar DP con and I'm gonna you know call the function call connect and finally I'm gonna say return dollar this like so guys every time we're gonna run any function inside this particular class this function will return automatically and it will build a connection for us so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, function to uh, add users like every time we want to add users uh, like guys in order to add a user we need their username uh, we need their first name okay we need their last name uh, we need their email their password and let's say an IP address like from where they have actually been added to our database and their user level okay so like these are I would say three and seven parameters that we need to pass every time we're gonna call this particular function so what I'm gonna do is here I'm gonna say dollar query okay like it's a very simple normal variable you can name it to anything you want okay guys next thing I'm gonna say is dollar this link like very first we're gonna reference to our database connection and then I'm gonna say I'm gonna return like I'm gonna run a prepared statement now guys prepared statements are a safer way to insert anything to a database and you can actually make your database secure from an SQL injection okay so um, here I'm gonna say dollar this link prepare uh, then I'm gonna say insert uh, insert into uh, let's say our table name called users okay uh, then I'm gonna say the username uh, first name last name here are gonna be an email their password and then gonna be the IP address uh, like this or double D out here uh, then I'm gonna say user level so these actually gonna be the field names inside the database table called users okay so we're gonna populate these fields and what our values gonna be to populate them so here I'm gonna say values and guys it's gonna be a caution mark every time 
Now guys, every time we run a prepared statement, we will, you know, pass in some caution marks here and later, you know, we will execute the values inside it. Now guys, if you have a, uh, if you have never wrote any prepared statement, you probably gonna, you know, uh, confuse yourself what exactly going on here. But for that, you need to, you know, check out some beginner videos on prepared statements. So, like, how many, uh, I would say, uh, I would say how many values are, are out here and we will have to, you know, pass in the same amount of caution marks. So, we're gonna have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So, here I'm gonna say 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay, guys, and we are done. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say dollar query execute dollar values. Okay, now we're gonna create this particular variable called dollar values. Here I'm gonna say dollar values will be equals to an array, and array gonna be these seven parameters. So I'm gonna copy it, and here I'm gonna paste them. Now next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say dollar row count will be dollar three row count like how many rows have been returned uh you know at the time we run this particular function or i would say at the time we're gonna run this particular query so here i'm gonna say return dollar row count and guys if everything went fine uh every time it's gonna return one row okay so that's done while adding our users uh next thing gonna be a function called list users okay uh, for that, all we need is their ID. Okay, here I'm gonna say user ID. Then I'm gonna say dollar query, and here it's gonna be dollar this link query. Now, guys, this time we're not gonna run any prepare statement. That's the reason we are not using the phrase called prepare, and we are using the phrase called query because we are running a simple and a plain query. Here I'm gonna say select all from and our table name called users where uh, user id is equals to dollar user id okay <coughs> and here i'm gonna still limit it to one uh, then i'm gonna say as dollar row count like the same thing we did uh, last time here i'm gonna say dollar query row count like how many rows have been returned here i'm gonna say if dollar row count is equals to equals to one okay like if it's returning something from the database then i'm gonna say dollar result it's like a new variable we're gonna create and we're gonna make it equals to an array they're gonna contain everything related to this particular user id so here i'm gonna say fetch all okay and if you're not able to get anything here i'm gonna say dollar result will be equals to zero okay and finally i'm gonna say return dollar result <coughs> And guys that's done with list users let's say we have one more call edit users okay like uh if in case you want to edit any user so here guys i'm going to say user id because we need to know which particular user we want to edit and guys the next thing going to be a param like it's going to be an array of all like uh, i would say for all the fields we want to edit for that particular user so uh, what I'm gonna do is here I'm gonna say dollar query uh, here it's gonna be dollar this uh, link query but before that we need to run a for each statement so here I'm gonna say dollar per as dollar key dollar value now guys let me explain to you why i'm running this particular for each statement out here now guys this particular variable called perm it's going to contain the field name and the value so let's say i want to edit the user email so it you know the array gonna be you know something like this array here it's gonna say uh, you are editing the email and the new email gonna be you know something at the rate you know gmail.com so this is actually it's gonna be so if I want to edit their name, so it's going to say name and their name to John. So what we are doing is we are actually breaking out this particular array and I'm saying, you know, return all the keys and the values. Okay. So here I'm going to say uh, update users set dollar key. Now guys, if you will remember properly, 
a dollar key actually you know refer to the field name like I showed you like email equals to something at the right gmail.com so the email actually gonna be the key so it's gonna be the field name and the value gonna be this particular SDS for this particular example so I'm gonna remove it now here I'm gonna say set dollar key equals to dollar value where uh, where ID actually gonna be dollar user ID okay and I'm gonna say limit it to one and also here I'm gonna say ID not user ID hey guys so it's gonna run this particular for each statement let's next I'm gonna say dollar row count will be equals to dollar query you know the same thing so I'm probably gonna you know copy it from here and I'm gonna paste it here so I'm gonna return that now guys the final thing gonna be you know a delete user so here I'm gonna say delete users and here I'm gonna say all we need is their user ID so here I'm gonna say user ID uh, next thing I'm gonna say is dollar query I'm gonna be equals to dollar this link query and I'm gonna say delete from users where uh, ID is equal to user ID okay so that's all we need to do again I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna return it so we can actually know how many roads have been affected by this particular query and here I'm gonna say limit one also so guys that's all from our user class what we are doing is we are creating a class you know every time we're gonna run a console function like uh, probably I would say every time we're gonna initiate this class it's gonna you know make a connection with the database and we're gonna use that particular connection every time we're gonna run any statement or I would say any query so the very first one gonna be an add user where we need a username their first name last name like all the required fields in order to create a user if you want you can add more depending upon your application need uh, the next thing gonna be you know if you want to list any user and uh, I believe guys I have to make a couple of changes out here so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna say user ID equals to null and the guys what this particular null thing means is we will like it's not you know required to pass in this particular parameter every time so let's say if I'm gonna run this particular function called add users and if I'm not gonna pass in these seven parameters I'm gonna end up with an error because I'm because I'm forced or I would say it's required to pass in all the seven parameters but that's not the case with list user because here I'm saying it's equal to null so if I want I can pass it if I if I don't want there is no need to do it so what I'm gonna do is here I'm gonna say if is set dollar user ID like if there is a parameter called user ID okay like this then we're gonna run, run this particular query else we're gonna list all the users okay so I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna remove this particular where clause select all from users that's it and here I'm gonna say order by ID descending now guys here instead of row count one I'm gonna say greater or equals to one because if we if we are actually not gonna pass in any user ID it's gonna return more than one row if there is more than one user in your database so guys that's all from list users uh, the edit user gonna take a user ID and all the fields we wanna you know uh, edit with their values inside an array and the final one gonna be a delete user which can take a user ID to delete that user from our database so guys that's all from this particular video I'm gonna see you guys next time